and little toy guns. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of AM Minnesota. We've got a very informative program for you today. Not that we don't every day, but I've really been looking forward to our visit with Dr. Randy Reister. He's with the Northfield Hospital and Clinics, an endoscopy specialist, a board-certified internal medicine physician from the Northfield Hospital and Clinics. And I forgot to bring my calendar in here to plug some upcoming shows. How silly of me. So we're going to dive right in. Uh, Dr. Reister, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. This is my first time following uh, Carrie Underwood. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> a lot of people would like to follow Carrie. I, I won't go there. I'm sorry. Anyway, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer among American adults. And, of course, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, which is why you're with us today. Absolutely. Let's get a little of your background. Uh, how would anybody decide to go into this line of work? Well, I, my uh, practice is internal medicine, so I take care of uh, primarily adults uh, with uh, eh, somewhat complex um, histories uh, such as uh, diabetes, heart failure, uh, and so one of those things is uh, bleeding in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, bowels, and uh, so it just kind of naturally followed that uh, I would learn how to do colonoscopies in my training, and uh, that's a part of my practice that uh, I really enjoy, and I, I certainly enjoy uh, meeting all the different kinds of people that I don't know from my primary practice uh, that are my partner's patients that I perform colonoscopies on on Fridays here at the Northfield Hospital. Um, and it's, uh, it's very gratifying to know that I'm uh, having an active role in reducing uh, their risk of colon cancer moving forward. Yeah, I was just going to say it uh, must be pretty cool to be knowing that you're saving lives. It is, and uh, it's one of those things that maybe you don't see it uh, that day, but every uh, precancerous polyp that you remove uh, is reducing that person's risk of colon cancer. And we have seen a remarkable decrease in uh, colorectal cancer uh, over the years since uh, colonoscopy has become a much more common procedure. Everyone should get a colonoscopy, right? Correct. Everybody should have one at age 50. Uh, those people that have uh, colorectal cancer in their immediate family should have one done roughly 10 years prior to their uh, the age that their family member was when the, when they were diagnosed with colorectal cancer. So if your father or mother had colorectal cancer at age 45, you should have your first colonoscopy at uh, 35, for example. Yeah. You always wanted to be an internal medicine specialist when you got into... So. Yeah, you know, I went to uh, went to college and uh, got all my uh, prereq. I grew up in a little town of 600 people out in South Dakota. Uh, you know, my dad had a bar. Um, <laughs> he was a small business owner, and my mom worked for the gas company. And I'm actually the first uh, person in my family uh, to go to college or to graduate from a four-year college. And uh, got right into medical school after that and went to medical school. And then uh, my wife, I met my uh, lovely wife, who's a... She's a stay-at-home mom right now, but she's a family doctor um, in medical school. And uh, so we both did our residency. She did family medicine, and uh, I did my internal medicine residency, which, again, is a kind of a more uh, focused on adults with uh, chronic medical problems. Uh, we trained in Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, we were back in South Dakota uh, in her hometown of Mobridge, South Dakota, uh, for three years. And uh, she had gone to St. Olaf for her undergraduate uh, training, and uh, so we knew of Northfield, and we moved here about 10 years ago. Cool. That's awesome. How old are you kids? Uh, my oldest is 13, and I have a 12-year-old. Uh, the 12- and 13-year-old are boys, and I have a little girl who's nine. Boy, yeah. you are busy, busy, busy. I'm then. busy, but my wife is even busier. So, <laughs> Yeah. Again, March is cancer, colon cancer awareness month. And we wanted to talk a little bit about colorectal cancer today because it's the third most common cancer among American adults. I only got about a minute here before a market update, so I don't want to dive too much into uh, this. The procedure, the colonoscopy I was sharing with some of the folks here at the radio station earlier. I have mine. Well, I didn't get it at 50. I got it at 52. It took me a couple of years to decide I better do it. And I didn't think it was really all that bad, but we'll talk a bit more about that in the next Absolutely. segment. Absolutely. How's that sound? That sounds great. Dr. Randy, do you prefer Randy or Randolph? Whatever you like. Dr. Randy Reister 
is with us this morning from the Northfield Hospital and Clinics. We certainly appreciate his taking time out of his busy schedule, and we will dive more into this. What are the warning? Field Hospital and Clinics, and again, thanks, doctor, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. It's my pleasure. Educate us about this, if you would, please. What are the warning signs of colon cancer? Well, sometimes there are no warning signs, so uh, anybody with a family history should have a colonoscopy. Um, and we'll go into the, the logistics of that. But, uh, you know, anytime you, you have a uh, uh, tumor potentially in your colon, you can have a change in the shape or character of your bowel movements. Nobody likes to talk about that, but that may be the case where you'll be having very narrow stools or irregularly shaped stools. Uh, the most classic uh, sign of colon cancer is uh, blood in the stool, and that needs to be investigated right away. Um, any type of anemia or blood loss, uh, you know, people can have spread from their colon cancer before they actually know that they have colon cancer. So I would recommend, uh, you know, routine screening at age 50 and also if you have a family history, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, getting screened sooner. Also, any change in your bowels, any blood in your stool, any anemia that can't, or low blood count that can't be explained. Uh, sometimes fatigue is a good sign that you are having uh, anemia, and that should be evaluated as well. A good friend of mine about 10 or 12 years ago died from uh, colon cancer. He was diagnosed at 32. That's a very young man. That person probably has a uh, genetic uh, tendency to colon cancer. There's a you know Some people have uh, various types of uh, genetic diseases that uh, increase your risk of colorectal cancer. Uh, and, you know, that person uh, may or may not have had a family history. I don't so know. It's, hard, I do, it's hard to say. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly if he did. All I know is he hung on for about eight years with this, and I mean hung on. Right. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, we know that uh, by doing uh, uh, taking the general population and doing a colonoscopy at age 50, you remarkably reduce the uh, overall burden of colon cancer on the population. You still are going to have some outliers uh, that have uh, col colorectal cancer that develops earlier in life. You also have people that uh, have never had a colonoscopy and they live to be 100 years old. So, yeah. uh, but I mean, just taking the general population, um, we know that we can make a remarkable difference in uh, the prevalence of uh, colon cancer if we snip off the little precancerous polyps uh, on routine colonoscopies. Uh, and not only do we reduce the risk or burden to the population, all the Medicare and insurance dollars that goes to that, we eliminate a lot of pain and suffering on people, too. So, Yeah, that was tough to watch. I mean, young man like that, and it's not expected, as you mentioned. At 32, you don't expect to be diagnosed with no. colon cancer. No, that's definitely the case. So I guess my question, well, the reason I brought that up was, why the age of 50? I think that uh, we are relying on, we try to practice what's called evidence-based medicine. And what is evidence-based medicine? Evidence-based medicine is uh, making recommendations based on uh, science, based on uh, uh, research uh, and the recommendations made by, uh, you know, the big university centers in the country. And uh, we know that colorectal cancer becomes more prevalent as you get older. It's very rare uh, before you turn 50. Uh, however, it becomes much and much much more common as after you reach 50. And so, by starting screening at age 50, we are catching uh, a lot of precancerous polyps uh, that uh, may not have been there at age 40 or 30. Uh, but uh, the numbers just don't work out to do uh, colon colon screening, uh, colon cancer screening before age 50. So that's what the numbers are telling us. And I think it's really really been shown to be true uh, for the overall population. I have to tell you, I was concerned before I got my colonoscopy because I I have a diet very heavy in meat, you know, sure. and red meat in particular. We're Midwesterners. So I, I was very concerned, but I got a clean, you know, 10-year bill of health. Well, that's great. I think the number one risk factor is uh, still genetics. Uh, there, there is some thought that uh, potentially uh, high animal fat, low fiber diets do play a risk as well. And that's why I was a bit concerned. But Absolutely. I was certainly happy when the doctor said, Gordy, I got good news. You don't have to come back in 10 years. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> By then, you know, the stuff you take beforehand will probably taste even better. That's right. It's certainly come a long ways in the last few years. Well, that's what I've been told. My brother had his. He's four years older than me, and he told me how horrible it was, so... Believe me, I wasn't looking forward to it. That's kind of why I put it off for a couple of years. And then I, I did it, and I didn't think it was that bad. So it must have been much better from when my brother did it. 
Yeah, it, we in the last uh, well for sure ten years we've I'm, uh, I've uh, done about three different types of preps uh, for colonoscopies over the years, and uh, I've with each uh, new prep that comes out uh, we find it to be safer. Uh, also, I get fewer and fewer complaints about the taste and the <laughs> and the intensity of the uh, prep. Yeah, well, basically, for lack of a better term, you have to clean yourself out. You do. We'd have to be able to see the uh, mucosa or the lining of your uh, colon. Uh, and uh, the preps nowadays are fantastic, um, and the, the, the more cleaned out people are, the easier the procedure is to do and the more effective the procedure is. In fact, I was just telling somebody at the station earlier this morning, I have actually thought about doing this on my own each year because uh, it's got to be beneficial to clean yourself out every once in uh, a while. You know, it's, it's certainly not going to hurt you at all, and, uh, uh, but uh, as far as, um, you know, routine colon cleanses, we don't really recommend. But, oh, you don't, uh, huh? Well, you know, it's a metabolic shift of a lot of electrolytes and things. Um, you know, you can get them commercially available. Yep. I mean, there, there are people out there that deal with chronic constipation that are on that medication all the time, and that's perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, they, again, back, back to evidence-based medicine, um, you may feel better after you have your uh, gut cleaned out, uh, but really it doesn't, show, doesn't seem to help your health uh, all that much. No. The procedure takes, what, 20 minutes? It should take at least, uh, well, it should take, uh, in a good case, uh, that's fairly straightforward, it should be 20 minutes or so, I absolutely. Mean, the actual on-the-table time. Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, the person uh, comes in and uh, we give them a little medication uh, to make them sleepy. Uh, typically, the patient will fall asleep during the procedure. We do the procedure and they remain in you know, a sleeper groggy for another 20 minutes or so before they start to become uh, more alert. And then we watch them in the recovery area for, you know, 40 minutes or so, and uh, we let them go home with the driver. Yeah, I can remember the doctor saying, please roll over on your side. I rolled right. over on my side, looked at the monitor, and boom, I was all yeah, light. right. Yeah, I tell people uh, one of us has to stay awake during the procedure, and I'll, I'll go ahead and volunteer, and then let that be me. Well, that's good. And then when I woke up in the recovery room there, or whatever they call that room, the yep. Uh, yep. like I said, the doctor came in and said, I have good news for you. Yeah, it, uh, my experience with uh, patients is uh, they don't really remember a lot of the procedure at all because they're super sleepy. Yep. Uh, they often, a very common response is uh, they don't believe that I've actually done the procedure, uh, although we have documentation and pictures and um, we do document a number of things with, within the colon, uh, but most of the people don't even realize they had the procedure done. Yeah, I did get a picture, too, which I yeah, absolutely. didn't necessarily want, but I... Right, put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> uh, that didn't go on my refrigerator. It went right in, <laughs> right in the wastebasket when I got home. But it was kind of interesting to see, you know... Absolutely. Your, your insides, I guess. You've never seen that before. No. No, and, uh, you know... I just as soon not see it, to be honest. That's right. That's why That's I'm right. not a physician like you. That's true. You know, I was looking at some statistics here that your your public relations department sent me, and I'm I got to be honest, I'm alarmed that just sixty percent that sixty percent of Americans fifty or older have not had any sort of a colonoscopy. Yeah, we find that you know we try to be really diligent. You know, I do primary care as well uh, in the office here in Northfield, and we try to uh, keep everybody up to date on all their health maintenance, whether it be vaccinations or PSAs or mammograms, or routine health maintenance for everybody. Um, but it's uh, there's a little bit of stigma attached to colonoscopies, uh, but colonoscopies can really save your life. Well, I don't think there's any question about it because basically. You just snip out whatever polyps you find, right, and you test Correct. them. Correct, yep. We have a number of devices that we can use to resect those uh, small polyps. And actually, uh, larger polyps, uh, depending on what the situation is, um, and we know that uh, by taking those out, we reduce the risk of colorectal cancer dramatically. If we do find a colon cancer, there's a still a small chance that we'd be able to get that out uh, with the endoscopy uh, equipment, uh, but oftentimes that person needs to have uh, that portion of their colon removed surgically. Yeah, that's what happened to this uh, friend of mine who was diagnosed in his 30s. He, you know, they kept taking snippets of the colon out. Sure, sure. And it wasn't, uh, it was, like I could say, it was kind of hard to watch him. Watching yeah, watching somebody die of cancer is, is uh, probably one of the worst things uh, that uh, we can experience. So does everybody have polyps? 
Uh, not everybody has polyps. I should find uh, colon. I should find precancerous colon polyps on a routine uh, colonoscopy 25% of the time. Uh, that's why when people have a colon polyp and I inform them of that after the procedure, that's not really a cause for alarm uh, because that's a that's a finding that I need to have to keep um, to uh, ensure. You know, basically, we follow that uh, percentage of uh, every endoscopist of what percent of their cases have precancerous polyps and do not, just to make sure that we're finding everything that should be there. Um, so, 75% of the people will have no polyps. So, but of those uh, 25% that have precancerous polyps, we take those out. Again, we're eliminating their, we're never, not completely eliminating, but dramatically reducing their risk of developing colorectal cancer in the future. But not all polyps are cancerous, right? Correct, correct. We, uh, there's hyperplastic polyps, uh, which is a big word that just means non-cancerous, non-precancerous. And I find those uh, probably 20% of the time. So I should find something maybe 40% of the time, but only precancerous polyps. Uh, 25% of the time, and I do find uh, two to three uh, mature uh, cancers per year uh, on routine uh, colonoscopies. What a bummer that must be. Yeah, yeah, but uh, fortunately, you know, those people oftentimes uh, are uh, cured surgically and don't need to have any chemotherapy and uh, do really well. It says here that one in 20 adults, this is according to the American Cancer Society, one in 20 adults will get colorectal cancer. So your odds are pretty good. They're pretty good, and I think uh, that's, um, I think we've, we've made some progress on that over the years, reducing the, the, uh, that number uh, just by doing routine colonoscopies. Which is why I said before I was somewhat alarmed that everybody doesn't get one because it really is, is, aggravating more than anything else yeah but we um you know the, to watch the people that uh, come in oh at 65 with blood in their stool and uh, we wish that we would have uh, done a uh, colonoscopy 15 years earlier um it's hard to hard to see now just because someone has uh, blood in their stool when they're 65 and haven't had a colonoscopy that doesn't mean that they have for sure colon cancer there's lots of other reasons why there can be blood there uh, but I would encourage anybody to, if they've not had their routine colonoscopy at age 50, to get scheduled and get one done. Um, it will uh, likely add years to your life if we, if we find a precancer or even a cancer. So once I got the result at the age of 52 that I didn't have to come back for 10 years mm -hmm. and get another colonoscopy, I, I thought to myself, okay, I've gone 52 years. Right, right. <laughs> and I haven't had it. So why is it only 10 years before your next one? Well, I mean, we all are aging. Um, you know, you at age uh, 50 is, are a lot different than you at age 20 as far as what's happening within your body. And so um, we know that it takes about 10 years to uh, grow a uh, cancer from a precancerous polyp. Um, and so if we do another colonoscopy, if we've taken off all the precancerous polyps, uh, and we do another colonoscopy 10 years later, um, you know, you're essentially starting at ground zero. So you shouldn't have had time to uh, grow a uh, precancer, grow a significant precancerous polyp in that time. Now, if we take off uh, some precancerous polyps, uh, we recommend either a five or a three year follow up, depending on the size, because those people are at higher risk of developing precancerous polyps and colorectal cancer uh, moving forward. Obviously, you do this at the Northfield Hospital. We do. We have a lovely uh, surgery center here, just opened a year or so ago. Uh, we have it's very comfortable for patients. It's very private, um, and uh, we have a pretty streamlined process where uh, we're not going to keep you all day. We'll get you, get you in, get your procedure done, and uh, get you safely recovered, and then uh, back home with your loved ones. So, if listeners 50 and older have not had a colonoscopy, and they say, you know, I probably should get that done, they just call, make an appointment. Yeah, we, could, we would be happy to talk to you on the phone uh, and get things set up for you. Uh, also, we could uh, do it through a referral from your primary care doctor, um, but uh, we'll do whatever we need to do to, to get things taken care of for them. So the number one risk factor is heredity. Family history. Heredity. Family history and age. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So less intake of red meat, that sort of thing, will not... Yeah, I think that will make a little bit of a difference, uh, and I think that there's ongoing studies... Um, on that, I don't know if they're taking volunteers to eat uh, the Atkins diet uh, nonstop to see if they develop rectal cancer. That's hard. That's a hard study to form. Well, that's for sure. Uh, but um, 
that seems to make a little bit of a difference. There's some other subtle things, but uh, the the uh, the big players uh, are uh, age and family history. I'm living proof of this because, uh, like I said, I have a very high meat diet. Like you said, I'm a Midwesterner. That's right. That's right. Meat and potatoes, my friend. Meat and potatoes. That's how I was raised as well. So I um, I uh, don't miss a lot of meals, and I unfortunately, and maybe it's fortunate, I enjoy some good red meat and uh, in moderation. So I think uh, in general in medicine, moderation is the key, and uh, if you can get some uh, leafy greens and some fiber as well, that would probably help your help your gut. Well, yeah, I like uh, peanuts, munching on those, raisins. There you go. That sort of things. That's probably good for you, isn't it? That's very good for you. Moderation. Get some good fiber. That's right. So this stuff that we drink that cleans us out, I'm assuming is better now than even it was when I had mine five years ago. Yeah, it depends on which uh, prep you have. But uh, essentially we uh, mix some powder with Gatorade and there's a couple of tablets to take. And uh, people, you know, it's going to give you a a rip-roaring diarrhea. Uh, but that's kind of what we need to be able to see in there and make sure everything's okay. Uh, it's a lot, much, much less volume than it used to be, and it's a lot more palatable uh, than it used to be. Well, the reason why it's less volume is because you're asked to not eat for a while, right? We do want you to, to not, uh, yep, to have uh, clear liquids the day before, uh, just because we don't want a lot of, a lot of bulk in the in the diet, or, right. sorry, in the colon to clean out. Yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. Sure. So how long have you been doing this, Doc? I've been doing this uh, for about 13 years. Um, first three years in a, mo- a little town called Mobridge, South Dakota. And I've been here at the Northfield Hospital for 10 years in September. Has the procedure itself changed at all? Not the prep, but the actual procedure is pretty much uh, the same? The procedure is roughly the same. We have some new techniques uh, as far as resecting larger and flatter uh, polyps uh, that I've had some training uh, and had some experience with. But the procedure itself is uh, roughly the same. Uh, you know, we we uh, we get better at the uh, sedation all the time. We get better at the procedure, the actual manipulation of the scope all the time. And so uh, uh, I think that uh, looking forward, uh, I think there may be um, more um, laser ablative therapies uh, that are available where we actually destroy the surrounding tissue with uh, argon laser. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's always new things coming out, uh, but uh, the procedure, the, the nuts and bolts of it are, are roughly the same. So when you snip out these polyps, you can tell right away if it's cancerous. Uh, actually, I send them in to the pathologist. I have a, I have a pretty good idea if, um, if it looks like a precancer or not to me. Uh, but I send it to the pathologist. I get the results back in a few days, get a hold of the patient, uh, make further recommendations. Oh, okay, because I just remember the doctor saying, you don't have to come back in 10 years. So Yeah, you probably didn't have any polyps. And uh, those, you know, I can tell those people to come back in 10 years, absolutely. Well, how cool is that? Yeah. And it's basically based on heredity. That's amazing to me. Heredity and age are the two big, big players. And I was even older than what you're supposed to be. Yeah, I think you you were you were still well ahead of the average person. The average person at 52 probably still hasn't had their screening colonoscopy yet, but uh, we encourage them to come in and get that done. Yeah, well, and and again, it's a little aggravating, but it's painless. Sure. At least I yep. didn't feel any pain. No, and I think that's been my experience with most people. And when it's all done, do you think, wow, that isn't as bad as I thought it would be? That's that's the uh, the most people say. I can't believe you're done already. Yeah, yeah. Well, so wake up in the uh, they wake up in the recovery area and uh, they're ready to go home. So a little groggy though. You need somebody to take you home. You need someone. You can't be driving the rest of the day. No, because you're still under the influence of the uh, sedative. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and that stuff's powerful stuff. I actually thought, you know, if I have a sleeping problem, I should get this stuff. Yeah, it would sleep a little too well, maybe. Yeah, that might be might be the case. So, again, we want to see everyone 50 years of age or older get a colonoscopy. It doesn't matter whether you have a family history or not. Everyone should do it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can reduce the risk of, uh, of untimely, uh, uh, unfortunate outcomes if we can get people in to have their colonoscopy done and do some preventative medicine. Men and women. Men and women, absolutely. Men have a slightly higher risk, but not, uh, not significantly. Yeah, I haven't heard of a lot of uh, people that I know, women having 
colorectal cancer, but unfortunately, I've I've known a lot, quite a few of them, and uh, the outcome is roughly the same. Uh, but uh, you know, certainly they they need to be screened uh, just as hard as uh, the men. Okay, so I'm glad to hear that we need to get everybody in to get a colonoscopy. The number to call, by the way, if you'd like to make an appointment, I just so happen to have that here. Oh, great. Is 507-646-6000. How's that for easy to remember? That sounds good. 507-646-6000. So how many of these procedures do you do a month? Uh, I do about 300 a year. So I do 25 or so a month. I just do one day a week. The rest of my uh, practice is... Uh, taking care of uh, hospital patients and clinic patients. I do see people in the emergency room as well. Um, so, but we have, uh, I have two, uh, I'm sorry, two partners uh, here at the uh, Northfield Hospital that are general surgeons that uh, do colon cancer uh, screening once a week and uh, each. And then we have a partner, Dr. Gaddick from the Alina Clinic who comes over one day a week. And he also does screening at the Alina Clinic here in Northfield. So uh, colonoscopies are easy to schedule. Uh, we'll, we can get it done for you pretty much any day of the week. Um, and uh, Minus Saturday and Sunday, of course. And you can do two or three an hour, right? Uh, I, I generally schedule them every 45 minutes because we need to turn the room over. Sure. Uh, but, uh, no, I, we try to make it very convenient for the patients. Yeah, again, that number is 507-646-6000, and you have more than one procedure room. We do. We have two uh, that we can, and we can also use uh, potentially one of the operating rooms. Uh, however, that's pretty uncommon. Uh, but we, we can uh, make it very convenient for the patient and get them in and get them out and get things taken care of for them. It's probably good that everybody has a thorough family history, but if they don't have that, that doesn't preclude them yeah, from we having should, this. Yeah, we would still recommend a screening at age 50, um, and then we can uh, do further recommendations based on what we find. Right. Because, uh, you know, in all honesty, I don't have a ton of information on my uh, sure. family history in terms of a lot of people don't medicine, which is not a good thing. That, that's probably true. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Doc. I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate you the time. Boogie. Thank you very thanks much. A lot. Randy, yeah, have a good day. You too. Randy Reister, our guest. He's an endoscopy specialist, a board-certified internal medicine physician at the Northfield Hospital and Clinics. And my hope is if you're over the age of 50 and you've heard the program, that you get that colonoscopy done because it really is It's not as bad as you might expect. It's a bit aggravating, but if really do feel better once you're cleaned out and then you get on the table and you're it's over at a heartbeat like i said i rolled over and bam i was out like a like a baby that concludes today's